quick record. Okay, recording is up. Okay, so anyone um, have any problems with this tutorial? Um, any major problem first? Okay, let's go through a few little things. Okay, so question number one is, when do you use ANOVA? Anyone? When do you use ANOVA? Uh, so, uh, we can use uh, ANOVA to determine whether there are any statistically significant uh, differences between the means of two or more independent uh, groups. Okay, yes. yes. So, you use yes. ANOVA. Okay, okay. Uh, John, you have to... Let me see. Yep. Okay. okay, so when you use ANOVA, when you want to find out, okay, first is two or more samples. Now, T test can only do up to two samples. Okay, so when you have three or more samples, you use ANOVA. Actually, the answer should be three or more samples rather than two or more samples. Okay, and what you're trying to find out is. Um, are the means of the samples equal? Okay, it's, it's actually, uh, ANOVA is essentially a test very similar to your t-test, but for three or more samples. Okay. So in this case, it makes your life quite easy. Just a few things to take note. <clears throat> Number one is ANOVA is always one tail. Okay? There's no such thing as two tail ANOVA. Okay? So there's, you don't bother about one tail or two tail in ANOVA. There's no such thing. Second is the hypothesis is always the same. Okay? The now hypothesis is always all means are equal. The alternate hypothesis is always at least one mean is not equal. Okay. So these two hypotheses is always the same for ANOVA. It will never change. Let's say when you have multiple samples, sample A, sample B, sample C, sample D, and sample E. Okay. Now hypothesis simply means that all the means are equal. So average of A equals to average of B equals to, so this is now hypothesis, huh? average of C, average of D, and average of E. So all the means are equal. At least the outer hypothesis, at least one mean is not equal, you cannot um, do the not equal sign. It basically means that any one can be not equal. It can be average of A is different from the rest. Okay. It can be average of C is different from the rest. It doesn't mean that they are not equal. Okay. It's just not equal from the rest. It also tells you that at least one mean. It can be the average, the mean of A and the mean of D are different from the rest. Okay, Any combination will work. So ANOVA is just to tell you that at least one is different. It doesn't tell you which one is different. It doesn't tell you is there more than one that is different. Okay, so that is very important. <clears throat> now, when Sean say that 
you can use ANOVA for two or more samples. Why did I not correct him? Can you use ANOVA for two samples? Uh, yes, sir. OK, mathematically, you can plug into equation for two samples. Now, if you use ANOVA, okay, let me just draw a box here. If you use ANOVA for two samples, it is actually equivalent to doing t tests with equal variance. You get the same result. Okay, you, <clears throat> you do that, you get the same result. So having said that, we want to clear off. Um, there's another point in ANOVA which you have to take note. There is ANOVA has two degrees of freedom. So this is important. Later we'll come to it. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is because it's very mechanical in the sense that ANOVA calculation is tedious, yes, but once you get used to it, it is mechanical. It is, in a way, I'll say that it's just blindly follow the steps. All right. So I will do question two with some of your help. Okay, so let's do question two. The first one, most of you can answer. What is the, so you, a baker shop uses three ovens, okay, and all the ovens are supposed to operate at the same temperature. So oven one, oven two, oven three. Okay. It's just take multiple readings of the same oven and say whether it's the average of the ovens the same. Okay. So the first two A, you are, find the sample mean that means uh, okay. you find the sample mean, the grand mean, and the variance for each of the ovens. So, okay, so here we have, I'll just pull this out. What is the, um, the means and the variance? In ANOVA, you'll find that we always use variance. You almost never use standard deviation anymore. So let's say, um, okay, so why not we have Ben? What is the mean and variance for each one and the grand mean? Uh, okay, so for oven one, the mean is so 205. Nine, answer first. Oven one is what? Uh, the mean is 205.2. 205.2. Then variance is 146.2. 146.2, correct. The other uh, one? Oven 2, uh, mean is 232.3. Uh -huh. uh, variance is 200.9. Okay. Oven 3, uh, mean is 218.2. 218.2. Variance is 694.7. Okay, what is the, what about the grand mean? Uh, 217.6. 217.6. Okay. Now, this you have to be careful. Don't be lazy. The grand mean is actually the average of all these numbers. Okay. Do not take the average of these three numbers. That means the average of the means. Although that's what grand mean is supposed to be, the average of the means. But do not do that. Why is because 205.2 comes from five numbers. 232.3 come from four numbers, so the weightage is different. Okay, so you if you just take the average of these three numbers, you'll get a different answer. So don't do that. Okay, so we found that out. ANOVA for one way ANOVA, because ANOVA you can go up to multiple ways. Okay, so let's do this part and we'll see what happens. The now hypothesis and alternate hypothesis is already stated. Okay, now hypothesis is all means are equal. Okay. Alternate hypothesis is at least one mean is not equal. Okay. The alpha is 0 0.05. Okay. Five. Then all you have to do is produce this table. You have the treatment. Error, total, 
degrees of freedom here, and then the sum of square, mean sum of square, and the F statistic. Of this table, what you do not need to fill up is this column, this column, or this out, this out, this out. So let me show you how to actually do that one at a time. The first thing that you can do is find out what is the total degrees of freedom. Total degrees of freedom is the total sample, the total number of um, data values minus one. So in this case, we have 5, 10, 14. So 14 minus one, total degrees of freedom is 13. Okay. Treatment degrees of freedom is the number of samples minus one. So we have three samples here, minus one. So treatment is two. These two numbers have to add up to 13. So you add up, the error will be, remaining will be 11. So far, any problem? Oh, okay, right? Okay, the next biggest issue is then we want to find out what is the critical value. So the critical value, we want to find out the F statistic for um, 0 0.05, correct, 0 0.05. The first degrees of freedom is your treatment degrees of freedom. The first one. The second degrees of freedom is the error degrees of freedom. Okay. So let's go to our table. <clears throat> um, so you go to 0 0.05. Alpha is <clears throat> the first degree of freedom is V1. <clears throat> so V1 is 2. 2 is a 2. Yeah. V1 is 2. So you look at this column then 11, so you find this, okay, Nine, 2 is 3.98, so it's 3.98, okay. so what is important is also here, for <clears throat> F statistic or degree, degree the value, right, the degrees of freedom, make sure that you don't swap it, because the value is not the same. Okay. So just now, for example, we have 0 0.05, 2, and 11. <clears throat> okay. This gives us 3.98. All right. If you swap it, 11 and 2, see what value will you get. Okay. So let's go to 11, which is, uh, let's take 10, since they don't have 11, and 2, okay? So it's 19 point something. So this is 19.4 and 19.5. So this is about 19.4. So do not swap these two numbers. Okay, you'll get a very seriously wrong answer. And why there is no such thing as um, one tail or two tail test? Because F distribution is non-symmetrical. All right. Okay. So in order to calculate the sum of square for treatment, which is this, okay, sum of square for treatment, we need a formula, sum of square for treatment. Okay, the formula is rather complicated. All right. So sum of square for treatment, the f what am I doing here? Okay. It will be the summation of the means minus of the grand mean. Okay, let me just get this cursor off. Minus of the grand mean square. Yeah. Multiply by the sample size. Okay. So in this case, it will be I expand it to three different things. It will be my first sample size is five. Okay. Let's say I do oven one first, five. The sample mean is 205.2. Okay. 
205.2 minus of the grand mean, which is 217.6 square. Then I do the second oven, which is 4, 232.2 minus 217.6 square plus next oven is 5. So will be, what is my fifth oven? 218.2 minus 217.6. Okay, so this, this gives me a value in total of about 1635. So I put down 1635 here. <clears throat> so far, any problem? Then I find what is the <clears throat> sum of error, sum of square for um, the error. So my sum of square for error is then another formula. Okay, which is actually the variance. Is some, this is will be the variance, the n, and the variance. Okay, so in this case, will be sample size. In here will be no is um, what am I talking? This is wrong. Oops. So it's a summation of sample size minus one times the variance. Okay, so in this case is. 5 minus 1 for the oven times the variance, which is uh, 2146.2 plus the next one is 4 minus 1 times 200.9 plus 5 minus 1 times 694.7. So I get an answer of about 3966. So I get put here 3966. Then you just add up these two numbers for the total. You get 5601. Okay, so mean sum of square will be sum of square mine divided by its own degrees of freedom, which is here once okay, will be. 1635 divided by 2. So in this case will be 817.5. So here will be the next one, sum of square for mean sum of square for error will be 3966 divided by 11. So here gives us 360.5. So your F statistic is mean sum of square for treatment divide by mean sum of square for error so it will be 817.5 divide by 360.5 that gives you 2.5 2. Uh, 2. Well, Anyway, it's 2.2, 2 2.268. Okay. So this is your F statistic. This is your F statistic. So far, any problem? <clears throat> then do you accept or reject the now hypothesis, Ben? Uh, accept. Accept, okay, because your F statistic is lower than your critical value. So since you just write down, since your F is lower than your F critical, you fail to reject your now hypothesis. So hence you accept, accept your now hypothesis. Therefore, so you re repeat the the average temperature for the three ovens are the same. 
Okay. Now, so as you realize, the most important number is your grand mean because why? If I were to mark this on paper, this is a 15 marks question usually. Okay. So if I mark this on paper, you find that if the grand mean is wrong, this number will be wrong. Okay. So how do I mark the 15 marks question? Um, let's say I will do this. I will actually take, okay, this is one mark. This is two marks. Your degrees of freedom is correct. It's two marks. <clears throat> and then this is three marks. Okay. Then I'll take this as the fourth mark, fifth mark, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the tenth mark. Okay. This is the eleventh mark, the mean. mean. Okay. This is the twelfth. All the means are correct. Twelve. Then what I'll do is I'll mark this the 13th mark. Okay. And here will be this part will be the 14th mark, and then this is the 15th mark. Okay, so this is how in actual exam how we allocate most of the marks. Now remember if your grand mean is wrong, if your grand mean is wrong, what happens is if this is wrong, automatically this whole equation will be wrong, correct? So this will be wrong. So if this equation is wrong, this equation is wrong, and this equation is wrong. Okay. So it is very critical. So don't mess up. But in computer, it's not easy to mess up. Okay. So ANOVA is mechanical. There's a lot of calculation, but it is not difficult to do. It's just tedious. Okay, so let's do the next one for question three. Any problem with question two so far? Okay, which is the mic working already? All right, so let's go on to question three. Okay, so Responsible have is trying to determine the three brands of shampoo. Hopefully you know the, the story, right? Um, Chief brand of shampoo, looking at how fast her hair grow. Okay, so why not we have the What is the sample mean, gram mean and variance for each of the three brands of shampoo? For the Milk Pro is 13.2 and then huh? follow, uh, 13.2, then 11.4, then 7. 13.2, 11.4, and 7. Okay, so this is sun milk. Then for variance is 5.7, 5.3, and 2.5. 5.7, 5.3, and 2.5. This is Fentin. Okay, and my grand, grand mean is 10.53. Correct. Okay. Now, in this case, because the number of samples are the same, you can take the average of these three numbers. Every of these three numbers, it will still work. Okay, but try not to do that. Huh? Okay. So, your. Okay, so we will not bother so much about the um. The hypothesis, because in fact, all the hypothesis are the same. Okay, so here, what will be your? Okay, let's try this. So this is um, treatment error total okay, degrees of freedom your sum of square your mean sum of square and then your s statistic okay the why am I having another column ah, doesn't matter. Okay, so can you give us all the numbers for the columns? So we don't need this, don't need this, don't need this. Uh, so what's the total degrees of freedom first? This one. Total is uh, 14. 14, okay. Treatment? Treatment is 2 then. Uh -huh. Error okay. is uh, 12. Alright. Okay. 
then the sum of square for treatment? Uh, 101.7. Okay. Then, this. um, error is 54. Okay, total. And sum is 155.7. Yep. And here? Then, uh, mean square is 50.9. 50.1. <laughs> 50.9 and then 4.5 okay so yeah. and your f statistic is 11.3 okay so what will be the the critical value so the critical value will be 0 0.05 and then what is the two degrees of freedom uh the treatment and error 2 and 12 2 and 12 okay so what will be that the the number? Uh, 3.89. 3.89. So what is your conclusion then? Uh, conclusion is, uh, since your F statistic is greater than F critical, um, uh, you reject uh, now. You reject now. Okay. So reject now. So you accept. Alternate. Yeah, alternate. So what does what does it mean? Meaning that um the um the brand the brand will affect how um the bundle hair goes. It's not the brand affect how. So you you just have to say that what is the now hypothesis. So it actually the average hair growth. Is different with one shampoo. One with at least one of the shampoo. Okay. All right. So, do you do this by hand or do you do this in Excel? Uh, um, by calculating. Oh. So, by, by calculator, that means manual. Or but I want to know whether you do it manually or do it in Excel. Uh, manually. Manually, okay. In fact, you can also do it in Excel to check. Yeah, you can do it in Excel to check. There's no problem with it. So you have done your practical already, so you should know how to do it in Excel to check. So let's go to Excel. Okay. So if you want to do it in Excel to check, that's also fine, no problem. You should know how to do it using your um, data analysis. So you use one single factor ANOVA. Input range. Um, group by columns, label in the first row, I don't have labels, so output range, just put it out somewhere, and then so okay. this one is because I highlighted the two, okay. not eight. One, two, three, four. Forget it here, Let me highlight the whole thing, it's easier for me. Yep. So this is your values. Okay, so you, what they have is all the values here. Okay. Yeah. So it's actually usually in the reverse order. That's all. So you can actually use Excel to check. Okay. So let's go to the next one. It's mechanical again. So let's try Felicia. Felicia, are you there? Yeah. Okay. Um, the mean for A is 2.97. Oh, now mean for A is A. Let me just stop. A, B, C. The mean for mean and the variance. So 2.97. Okay, 975. Uh -huh. B is 3.4. 
3.4. C is 4.1. Okay, good. Variance? Um, A is 0 0.0425. 0.425, correct? B is 0 0.04. C okay. is also 0 0.04. Okay. And, and the gram mean? Uh, 3.44. So, and let's do the table again. Okay. Treatment. Error. Total. Piece of freedom here. Sum of square. In sum of square. And your S statistic. Okay, so what is the total degrees of freedom? Nine. Nine. Okay, treatment. This? Seven. Okay, good. Then sum of square error, sum of square for treatment. 2.177. 2.177. Okay, good. Error? Uh, 0 0.3675. 0 0.367. Uh, uh, three, six, okay, it's not 0 0.367. So um, where do you I get my answer is actually 0 0.2. Eight seven five. Uh, zero point three seven. Okay, do you use n minus one or n? It means this part. N minus one. N minus one. Yeah. Okay. Can you try to recalculate again? Maybe I have a, my answer may be wrong there. Can you try to calculate this again and see whether you. Can. Or you wait, I just need to go to the toilet. Okay, let's see. Mm. A fluent, fluent C. Let's run through Excel and see what's the answer like. I should have just kept this Excel sheet on. Okay, so do you, do you still get the same answer, Felicia? This guy. Okay. Yeah, the sum of square error is 2.875. So, uh, Felicia, I think something is wrong with your calculation. Can you go and check it out? Okay. Okay. All right. So, if this is, um, check your equation and see what's wrong. Or did you use the, there's only two ways you can make it. You can have an error. One is you for, you never take n minus one. Um, I don't think you will mistake the sample standard deviation for variance. So that may be another thing that you get wrong. 
but you since you have the variance here, it's unlikely. So here will be um, 2.464. Four, and then what is your, at least you get this number right. What is the sum of square for treatment? 1.088. Uh, 1.088 or 1.089 around there. So this should be 0 0.04107. Okay. Now, um, because you this number, you'll probably get something similar. So you end up with, here you end up with a large number anyway, 24.46. You may end up with about 25 point something. Correct? Yeah. Now, because, okay, then what is the critical value? 0 0.05 and then 27. What will be the reading? 4.74. Okay, so because it's so much different, even this little error here is not going to make a, any difference. So, what is your conclusion then? Um, we reject now hypothesis. Okay, reject now hypothesis. Okay, so you accept the hypothesis, and what does it mean? When you accept that one of the mean lifespan from filament ABC is different. Okay, so yeah, one of the average lifespan is different. Okay, so I kind of put it a bit shorter and abbreviated. Okay, correct. All right. So you are quite familiar with all this already. Let's do question five. So question five, we have, what is this? Uh, okay. Ihan. Oh, yeah. Do you watch Teletubby when you're young? No. no. I have no idea what these Teletubbies are. Okay, so anyway, so what is the mean and variance? The mean for Dinky Winky is 6.43. 6.43, okay. Then for deep sea is 6.33. For Lala is 6.67. 6.67. Then for Bo is 6.1. The variance for Tinky Winky is 8.34. Alright. Deep sea is 5.85. Uh huh. Lala is 8.08. Okay, alright. Ho is 6.61. Okay. Then the grand mean should be 6.38. Alright. Okay. So, okay. Then we go to our table. Treatment error. Uh, the degree of freedom for treatment. Oh, is, huh? We just write down degrees of freedom. Number square, means number square, and. and Okay, degrees of uh, to, 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 to. Uh, degrees of freedom for treatment is three. Three. And for error is nine. Uh, why nine? Okay, what's yeah. the total first? Uh, the total is nine. Okay. No, no, okay, this number. Oh, the total is eleven. Eleven. So what will be here? How do I get that? Huh? Uh, oh yeah, I think I copied it wrong. Yeah, so this will be it. Okay. okay, so your sum of square should be correct. Then this number will be the one that's wrong. Okay, but doesn't matter, yeah. continue. What is your sum of square? Sum of square for treatment is 0 0.503. 503, okay. Uh, the error? the sum of square for error fifty seven point eight. Yeah, right. Total. Then for total is fifty eight point three. Okay. And this mean sum of square zero point one six eight. Okay. So you how can you this again quickly? Uh, seven point two three. Okay. The uh, F statistic? Uh, it will be zero point 
0.0232. Okay. So depends on how many decimal place you leave, three significant figures you get this. But um yeah, you will leave to four significant figures you get a slightly different answer, although as statistic will be the same. So what is the critical value? The critical value is uh 0 0.05, then the first degree of freedom is 3. Yep. Second degree of freedom will be 8. So it's 4.07. Alright, 4.07. Okay, then what is your conclusion? Since the F value is less than the critical value, which is 4.07, mm -hmm. uh, there is not enough evidence to support that. Uh, the alternate hypothesis is true at 0 0.05. No, you cannot say that. There is not enough evidence to support that the alternate hypothesis is true. You you have to accept or reject the null hypothesis. Uh, uh, reject the null hypothesis. Huh? You reject or not? Eh? Uh, you do not reject the null hypothesis. So you fail to reject? Yeah. Null hypothesis, therefore you actually accept the now, hypothesis, which then, what it, what it means? Uh, it means that the Teletubbies command different attention from children. Different or same? Okay, okay, Teletubbies yeah. what? Command the same okay, amount. Okay, Yeah, correct. Command the, the same attention. Okay, correct. Right on the screen, but you're right. Okay, very good, very good. So um, be careful with the degrees of freedom because once you get something wrong, it's um, it's very easy to propagate the error down. All right. Okay. Uh, six. Uh, okay, we don't have to do six. I think. Okay. Do we have to do six? Six is two-way ANOVA, so we don't bother about two-way ANOVA. Do you, anyone know how to calculate two-way ANOVA? Okay, I'm going to highlight this. Huh? Six should not be doing, but anyway. Oh, okay, so my highlighter is here. Hmm. Strange. So let's go to question seven. Question seven. Hold on, huh? Let me check. Do we have to do two way and over? I remember we don't have to do two way and over, but hmm. over. Okay, we have to do two way and over. Do you know how to calculate two way and over then? Anyone? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so it's, called, it's actually called, mentioned in the lectures already. So why not we try with, um, so the grand mean and mean, why not we try with grades? It's harder, much harder to do. Yeah, okay, can't hear you. For question seven. Yeah, so this num just tell me the numbers uh, to fill out the boxes. Okay, um, the first for, for mean for short is 176.75. Uh, oh, oh, what, 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 what is this? The mean for short? Yeah. 17? 176.75. Well, question 6. Oops, yeah. Uh, uh, I wonder I got it wrong because I'm on the ones. 176.75. Question 6 or question, question 7? Six, question 6. Oh, question question six. 6. Okay. 14.03. 14.03. 14.03. 12.9. 2.9. 12.9. 12.9. 12.9. Okay. Then 16.8. Uh huh. Then 18. Okay, how about here? Uh, 14 point, 14 point 
925. Okay, 925. 15.45. Uh-huh. And then 15.925. 925, okay. Well, how about the grand mean? Fifteen point four three three. Fifteen point four three three. Okay, correct. Okay, so let's do our table first. Okay, because two way ANOVA simply means that you test for two different hypotheses. Okay, so let's do the table. Okay, so here you have a few more, one more column. So here will be, instead of treatment, will be brand, which is the row, and then your fat, level of fatty acid, which is a column. Then the error. And your total. Okay. And then automatically you will have two F statistic. Okay, so um, just tell me whichever numbers that you are comfortable with now. Um, the DF. Okay. Uh, the, the brand will be three. The what? The brand will be three, okay? Yeah. The brand will be three. Then okay. the DSC will be two. Two. Error? Uh, total is 11. Total is 11, correct. And then error will be six. Yes. Okay. The, then the sum of squares. Okay. Um, sum of squares will be fifty point five two eight one. Five two eight one, okay. And then the ATS will be two point zero zero one eight. Okay. You leave it to a few more decimal places, fine. Okay, yep. Um, 0.1769. Correct. Okay, so you don't bother about the total because you can you can just add it up or can just leave it up to you. So let's do the mean sum of square first. 16.8427. Uh, okay, 16 okay. Then 1.0009. Yep. And then uh, 0 0.029. Okay, so these two numbers. Five seven one point three three. Okay. And then thirty three point nine five. Yep. All right. Okay, so when you do that, okay, you have two now hypotheses or two sets of hypotheses. You have to calculate for each one. Now the mean content for unsaturated fat different across different margarine. So the now hypothesis is the amount of polyunsaturated fatty acid is the same for all margarine. Okay. So what is your critical value here? So your F is 0 0.05. What is your first degrees of freedom for this one? Um, three. Three, correct. Second degrees of freedom? Uh, is it six? Yes, you use six. Okay, it's always the treatment and the error. You don't use the total. Yeah, correct. So now what do you get here? Four point seven six. Four point seven six. Okay. So what is your conclusion then? Uh, since F is greater than F critical, uh huh, we reject. 
no hypothesis. Okay, you check now hypothesis and you accept. Yeah. The now hypothesis. Okay. So what does it mean? Uh, there is no difference. Ah, huh? there's no difference. Uh, there no, is a difference. Okay, so that because <laughs> the alter hypothesis means there's a difference, ma. At least, um, let's say the average of um your fatty acid is different in at least one brand of margarine brand of margarine okay. so do, um don't mess up your now have uh, how now and outer hypothesis so for your different levels of fatty acid what will be your critical value different will be um the first df is two two next one and then the next one is six six correct so the value that you want sorry there's an error i'm oh, six yeah what is it six six yeah. uh okay let's go to the table and see is 0 0.05 0 so first df first is two three. second df is six so five this one three, one, four. Five, one four yeah five, three, two. Right. Okay. so it's 5.14 um just be careful and read the table uh. then what will be your conclusion this is 33.35 this is 3 and this is 5.14 uh, since f is greater f value is greater than the f critical uh-huh uh, we reject the now hypothesis. Yes, reject now hypothesis, except after now hypothesis, and what does it mean? There is a diff. I eh, know at least one. Eh? There is a difference. Uh, there is a difference in. The levels of the fatty acids. Uh, what did I do? Okay, so um, the average uh, this is what. Um, saturated fatty acid mean content of which um, is found in this one fatty acid or one brand of margarine. So what is wrong here? The mean content of the polyunsaturated is different from different brands of margarine. The fatty, uh, the fatty acid different is at least one level of margarine, at least in one level of margarine, one level of fatty acid. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Mm, let's see who have we not. Let's go jump down the list. Let's see who to pick. It's hard to pick names. Okay, so why not we just go to... Mm, how many questions do we have left? Okay, Hugh, why not you do the next one? For farm. Okay, for seven, the question seven, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, the short mean is 177. 177, okay. 
Uh, medium mean is 188. 188. Tall mean is 197. Okay. Uh, A mean is huh? 157. What, what? 157. Okay, 157. Okay. B mean is 177. Okay. C mean is 201. 201. Okay. And D mean is 214. 214. Okay, what's the grand mean then? 187. 187. Okay, okay. that's fine. So, this out. Okay, so we do the same thing again. Okay, so this we have height, brand, error, total, okay, so yeah, give me whatever number you are okay with. You. Yeah. Yeah. Which number? Uh, height. The D DF is two. Okay. Brand the DF is three. Uh huh. Error is six. Total is eleven. Okay. So here. Uh, SS for height is eight hundred and four point two. Four point two. Okay. Uh, type SS is. Five six seven four. Uh huh. Error SS is three nine point eighty three. Uh, what three nine? Um, oh, let me check what I got because I think I may have. I can't tell if I put decimal or error. Hold on. Um. I put I put the SS for error is three nine point eighty three. 29.83. Yes. It's, it's supposed to be 28.83. No. Okay, around there, 28.83. Okay, so the next column. MS, the height is 402.1. Okay. Brand MS is 1891. Uh huh. Error MS is 4.972. Okay, supposed to be 4.81, but it's going to be a slight error, but it doesn't matter because this is still going to be a giant number. Mm. Okay. So now you just manually help calculate this tool. Yeah. Okay. okay, so F for height, I think is about 80.9. Eight, okay, so the answer will be, be 83.59 around mm. there because it's still a very big number anyway. Next one. Yeah. I got 380. Okay, so it's about 393.25 because you this number is you get it wrong. Oh, okay. okay. That's fine. Right. Okay. But luckily, because this number is so big that your critical value doesn't make a difference. Nope. So for example, your brand, what is the critical value? Uh 5.14. Okay, so brand is 14. Okay, so supposed to be 3 and 6. Brand, 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 three and six. Uh, what, what is the critical value? Um, critical value for this one would be 4.76. 4.76, okay. Yeah, correct. So 4.76 for brand, you have. What is your conclusion then? Have to reject the reject now hypothesis. Yeah, so you re reject. Now hypothesis, you accept the outer hypothesis, and what does it mean? Um, yes, there's, there's a significant difference in the brands of the fertilizer. Yeah. Okay. Significant difference in brand of fertilizer. So to the sunflower height, sunflower growth. The sunflower growth. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Sunflower 
growth. Okay. Mm. Mm. About the height of the fertilizers, a uh, height of the sunflowers. So you have uh, three heights to begin with. Yeah. Oh, cool. Right, the F critical will be 5.14. Okay, go on now. So it's 2, 6. This is 5.14, correct. Okay, so you also reject the null hypothesis. Yes, you still need to reject. Okay. okay. And what does it mean? No, significant difference in height in height of the height level of the of sunflowers. Yeah. Significant difference in the average height of the sunflowers. Okay, good. So this uh eight and nine we don't have to do because it's um Quite different. So let's do 10. 10, you need to do a few of them. Okay. All right. So let's say, let's read the question. Uh, male ASC student with different background from different academic in different Differs, different background differs in academic performance. For in this study, 80 male students randomly selected using stratified sampling approach. The academic performance were measured using the current GPA. So different into groups. So you have DAP, joint admission, and then poly joint admissions. So what will be the null hypothesis for this study? Um, so next in the list will be Tracy. The null hypothesis is all the new are the same. Okay, but what is the mean here? I'm talking about the mean is the, what is the mean that you're trying to calculate? Okay. What is the, what is the mean, mean calculated from? The 80 male students. Uh, actually, no. So the means is the average, in this way, is the average of, uh, I'll say, GPA of, let's say, uh, DAP, uh, DPA is equals to the G average GPA of your JAE and the average GPA of your um, J. PAE. So that's what it means. It's the average of the GPA for the three different groups are the same. Uh, Tracy, you got it or not? Yeah. Okay. So what is then the alternate hypothesis? The alternate hypothesis is the average is not the same. Yeah. So that the average GPA is not the same for at least one group. Lah. Okay. Then what is the um hypothesis that you you will want to do? What kind of hypothesis test? Is it one way ANOVA? Hello. One way ANOVA. Okay, so because you actually have to origin, there's a whole set of um, notes that looks at your type that looks at the assumption because now your ANOVA requires the samples to be normally distributed. So there are samples for normally distributed things like your Shapiro Wilkes test, which is actually um, you can recover really cover that here, and then the homogeneity of the variance basically is equivalent to your F test for equality of variance. So these two have to be um, satisfied first. Okay. Now we don't bother about that. So, but in actual work, uh, you have to make sure that the assumptions are met. Okay. So let's say question E, assuming I do the correct test and the P value is 
this. So what is your conclusion? I put because p-value is smaller than alpha, so we reject the null hypothesis. Right. So p-value is less than the alpha. It's actually alpha with 0 0.05. Then you reject the null hypothesis, and then you accept the alternate hypothesis. And what does it mean? What is the conclusion? What is, what is the interpretation of accepting the alternate hypothesis? Not all the admission categories are the same. Yes, so the average GPA for at least one of the admission category is different. Yep, right. Okay. Okay, so let's go on to question number 11. 11, we have Maximus. Okay, so here you have a, can't even pronounce his name. Uh, believe that pupil size increased with emotional arousal, so 10 participants or our participants views three stimuli neutral, pleasant, or aversive. Okay. So then you measure three pupil size. Okay. The student want to perform a T test because the sample size is small. Why is it not appropriate? Max? Uh, wait, Joe, isn't it question 11? Oh, yeah, question 11. Oh. Okay, question 11. Ugh. Okay, I, I, have you done question 12 then? Uh, no, but I roughly know what is it about. Oh, I guess. Okay, because question 12, you don't, it's explanation. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so why not you try question 12? Uh, it's not appropriate because uh, it's more than three variables. Three samples, okay. Three samples, right. So, yeah, so right, uh, the test is for two samples. Okay, and here we have more than three, more than two samples here. Hello. If three samples, you have to use ANOVA, ma. Okay. Then here is question B. Why you want the student want to try one way ANOVA? Okay, why this may not be appropriate or may not be appropriate? Um, I this one I don't really know. Okay. Is it because of like, it's not normally distributed or something? So why is it not appropriate? It's because this is the samples, right? You see, it's the same student viewing neutral, pleasant and aversive. Okay. ANOVA requires the samples to be independent. So these are not independent samples because the person, the same patient, the same participant actually view three of them. You know what I'm trying to say? So yeah. will viewing a neutral actually affect the next slide, which is viewing the pleasant and so on, even though you may jumble up. Hmm. I understand. Okay. Yeah. So the, the issue here is um, this is not a independent sample. Okay. Then you can explain that. Okay. Participant viewing, let's say, if you view a uh, aversive picture, aversive photo, may affect, let's say, so for example, may affect the results for 
the next photo okay and so on all right so in this case what test will you suggest uh is it the repeated measures yes. nova test yeah repeated measures correct So repeated measures ANOVA test is very similar to your PET T test for three samples. Okay. So assuming that you perform the correct test and you get a P value of this, what does it mean? Um. Yeah, I didn't calculate the... No, you don't have to calculate. This is, let's say this is the result. You do all the correct tests and this is the p-value given by your software. So what does it mean in the context of this test or in this experiment? It's I very simple. No idea. <laughs> yeah, it's actually the same as what um, Tracy has said here. Lo. It's also the p-value given. Ma. So based on the p-value and the alpha, you accept or reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, you accept or reject the null hypothesis. Wait, but they didn't give the... the... Wait. Okay. Spend a little bit of time thinking it through and what yeah, tell me what's your confusion, otherwise I can help you. Don't we have to compare the P value with the P statistic or something? Yeah, correct. So the alpha in this case, if un unless it's given the alpha is zero point zero five. So now what we are saying is the p-value is actually lesser than the alpha. Okay. So in this case, we reject the null hypothesis. Now it's, it's flipped, it's turned over the other way. For the first few questions, we have been using the critical value, but now we use a p-value because in your software, it actually comes out a p-value. So you reject the null hypothesis and you accept the alternate hypothesis. Okay. So in this case, the conclusion will be um, there is different average pupil size. for different stimuli. The difficult part for you here, Max, is you, are, you have to switch your brain to consider that now you no longer use the critical value. Okay. The critical value is what we have, we have always been doing here. This is the critical value, using the critical value, but now we use that P value instead. Um, Max, do you know what's happening or not? Yeah, yeah. I was like confused about how to find the. Yes. The... Did you find the critical value here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just the alpha, so think right. it through. If you have problem, then you ask um, on the the class chat as well. Okay. Hmm. Make sure you get this right because in future when you go out to work or even for your MP, if you ever see me or whatever thing, right? All your M major projects, you use p-value most of the time because computer gives you p-value. Okay. So you see what I have here? Computer gives you p-value, although it gives you a critical value here as well. So most of the time you use the p-value rather than critical value. Okay. 
So it just happened that it gives you a critical value here as well. Okay, before we go to the next one, let's the Maximus Zool. Okay, Zool, Zool, Zool. Question 11 for you. Zool, are you there? Okay, we'll skip Zoo then. Akil? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Okay. So, uh, clinical trial, phase three of clinical trial, compare the efficacy of um, Plaxatine with that of Imperamine for patient with major depressive disorder. Patient, a sample of 539 samples were selected into the three treatment groups okay and the statistics is calculated okay want to conduct now one conduct a hypothesis test whether it change in the human hamilton depression score okay come for your advice okay so you explain assuming that there's no mistake in all the calculations huh? explain why these students should try one way anova uh, there's like three treatments so should try uh, one way ANOVA. Yes, correct. So, because there are three treatments or three samples. Okay, so one way ANOVA may be suitable. So, what are the assumptions that for ANOVA? Uh, the population must be normally distributed. Okay, normally distributed. The Population got a uh, common variant. Okay, common common variants. And uh, um, the data must be obtained independently and randomly. Independent, correct. Independent. Okay, so independently. So um, yeah. So Max, uh, going back to you is question twelve because the samples are not independent. Okay. Now, what mistake did you find? What mistake do you find here? Uh, because she put uh, more than uh, um, right. the alternative hypothesis. So the now hypo alternate hypothesis is wrong. Okay. The now hypothesis should be just at least one of the groups or samples is different in the average. what in the average um hamilton and how to spell hamilton uh? hamilton Hamil, hamilton hamilton depression score oh, okay good okay so we have finished up everything and now we are only left with the uh, true false questions our favorite true false questions. Okay. Okay, Heiko, first one. A researcher wants to see whether there's average of height difference in weight gained for athletes on three special diets. The now hypothesis should be the three special diets has a effect on weight gains. So Heiko, what do you say? True or false? False. False, okay. Yeah, this is actually the alternate hypothesis. Okay, B, Sean. Analysis of variance is a procedure for analyzing the differences among group variances. Uh, so the answer should be false. Okay, what is the, what, okay, what is analysis of variance for then? How do you change this statement to be true? Uh, so could we mention that uh, analysis of uh, variance uh, sh uh, should be uh, should be to uh, compare 
uh, the means, the 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 means yeah. uh, yeah. of the groups. Uh. Yeah. So you you talk so much, you really just change these variance into means. Oh, that's, that's all. So yes. can somebody remember, other than Sean, what is what is the procedure for analyzing differences among group variants? Okay. Um, Konara, do you do you remember a test for analyzing the differences among group variants? Um. I don't it's actually know. in your tutorial. It's actually in your tutorial. Just that we skip that part of the question. So what is a test? Like for example, um, to analyze between group variances um, in t-test, you have two samples, you use f-test for equality of variance. If you have more than two samples, what do you use? Isn't it a nova? So it be no, it's not a nova. So it be. Somewhere in question 10 or 11. Is it the Bradlow test? Right. This one? Ballot's test for homogeneity of variance. This Shapiro Wilkes test is for normality to test for um, normal whether it's your data normally distributed. Shapiro Wilkes test is one of them. In future, we'll learn a lot more, a lot of other tests. These days, we seldom use Shapiro Wilkes test, although sometimes I still use that. You can use another test called Komarov Smirnov test, but then um, it's much harder to calculate. Okay, but the test is used for homogeneity of variance, correct? So at least you know. When the statement is false, you have to roughly know how to change the statement to be true. Think about it. Okay. So, C. Let me go down. Uh, Heiko, C. Did I, did I call you already, Heiko? Yeah. Okay, call you. Okay, don't, don't bother answering. Ranjini, C. Uh, true. True, correct. Okay. F statistic can never be negative because if you look at the, the table, right? It is hitting zero, so it can never be negative. Well, your T test, you can go be, below zero. Okay. All right. So, uh, Danielle, the next one, 1D. One um, true. True, correct. Okay, true, then there's no argument already. Okay, so last one, Jeremiah. We have been missing you today. Uh, is it true? Correct. Okay. So you want to perform pairwise of six different groups. You have perform. How do you find? How do you get six groups? Okay, let's say yeah. Uh, again, Jeremiah. If I have um ten groups, how many t tests do I need to perform? Yeah, how many pairwise T tests do I need to perform? Uh, I'm not very sure. Try, try, try. Estimate at least. I'll, I'll show you how to calculate, don't worry, but I want you to try what is Intuitively, what is the number? Uh, is it around 20? 
around 20, mm, a bit more than 20, okay, it's actually 45. So how do you calculate pairwise t-test? For example, you have six groups. Let's say we have five groups. A, B, C, D, E. Okay, let's say we have five groups. We have to calculate A versus B, A versus C, and so on, right? Then do you want to calculate B versus A again? Do you need this? Jeremiah, uh, do you need this? No. No, right? Because these are the same. So think about it. This is exactly what you do. Okay, so I have A, B, C, D, and E. Okay. So let's say I have five groups. Okay, this is my, if I want to do all pairwise, this is my matrix I have to complete. Make sense, right? So far so good? Uh, yes. Okay. So I can tell you that if you have five groups, I will need to only make a certain number which is definitely less than 15. Okay, so what is the number? The way to calculate it is how many tests you use the number of groups, the n, which is the number of groups, you square it minus n divided by 2. So in this case will be 5 squared will be 25 minus 5 divided by 2. So it will be 10. So we need to do 10 pairwise tests. How do we actually get 10? So this 5 times 5 is 25. Makes sense, right? Sean, ever uh, Jeremiah? Yeah. Okay. Then you say that, do you want to test A versus A? Is it usable? I don't think so. No. So this is reduced through this. Huh? So we have 5 times 5 n times n, n square first, minus n, which is minus this trace. This is called trace of a matrix or the diagonal line. Then you realize that this, something went wrong. Okay, let me get there. Okay. Then you realize that this number and this number are the same, correct? These two x are the same. Yes, it's a versus b and b versus a, which is what you have here. So all you need to do is you have to settle only a top triangle or lower triangle. So this is the one that you want to work on, the bottom triangle. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, because the answer will be replicated on the triangle. This is why I get 10 groups is 45 because 10 square minus 10 divided by 2 is 100 minus 10 divided by 2 which is 90 divided by 2. That's how you calculate. Okay, This is a very useful way to remember because um, in future you may end up with a lot of such tests so you have to know what to do. Okay, so that's all for today. We have covered one and a half hours already. So you can go and view your lectures. Okay, that's all for today. So have fun. See you next week. Bye bye. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so may I ask uh, regarding uh, question uh, two a uh, two a sir. Yeah. Uh, tutorial uh so when we are calculating for the grand mean uh so uh if we took the the means we calculated the 205.2 uh 232.3 and uh 218.2 uh divided by three then the answer is not correct correct because i already told you this 215.2 comes from five numbers. This 232.3 comes from four numbers. This 281.2 comes from five numbers. So the weightage of the means are different. That is why 
you cannot take the average of these three numbers, the average of the three means. Instead, you have to take the, the actual average of all the 11 numbers. Uh, so, so uh, will it be correct to say that uh, the safest way for calculating for grand mean will always be to take uh, the overall mean of each individual? Uh, yes, correct. So if, but this is a good way of kind of playing cheat. Okay, because if you go to question number three, you will find that you take the average of these three numbers, the average of the means, you get the grand mean. The reason is the number of samples are the same for all the three different samples. Uh, so, so it's only when uh, the num each when the number of the samples are different from one another, uh, then we will need to use uh, uh, the the calculation for uh, the overall uh, mean of the individual samples. Yes, yes. Because, okay, the reason is this. The grand mean is actually your sample. Okay, um, let me just repeat this. The equation for grand mean is actually this. The summation of the sample i multiply by the mean of itself okay divide by the number of samples so what you actually need to do is you need to you want to use this tree right okay this yes, is sir. what you okay you will have to the grand mean should be um five times two 5.2 plus 4 times 232.3 plus 5 times 218.2 the whole thing divide by 11 then you get the same answer oh yeah uh yes sir. uh i see. so this is also another alternative uh, way of uh, getting the grand mean uh, besides just taking each individual. Yes. Uh, so in this case, you will see the grand mean, right? I will use um, one, two, three, four, five, since they're five. So five times 13.2 plus five times 11.4 uh, plus five times seven. Okay. This I divide by one, two, three, all together 15. Isn't it mathematically equal to 5, 13.3, 13 13.2 plus 11.4 plus 7 over 15? Yes, and sir. I just divide this over 3. Isn't that equivalent to taking the average of this 3? The problem is this. You must be able to reduce the equation first. You must be able to pull out the common factor. But yes, for sir. question one, you can't pull out the common factor because it's five, four, and five. That's why. Uh, yes, sir. I see. Uh, sir, uh, may as this method for calculating uh, the grand mean. It can also work for the two-way ANOVA as... Yep, exactly. So two-way ANOVA, for the two-way ANOVA, the grand mean is still the average of this um, 12 numbers. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, also uh, may I ask... Uh, Regarding uh, question 3 uh, B, uh, when we are writing out the uh, final conclusion yep. uh, uh, about the rejection or uh, the acceptance of the uh, uh, hypothesis, uh, uh -huh. so, uh, in the event that uh, we have rejected a HO in this case, uh, 
if we do not mention uh, at the end part about uh, how uh, at least uh, one brand of shampoo uh, affects how quickly Rapunzel's uh, hair grows, and we just mentioned that the brand of shampoo affects how quickly Rapunzel's hair grows, uh, will the conclusion be incorrect? The conclusion is still okay. The conclusion, this therefore statement, is dependent on how you want to explain your test to, in your report. Uh, so, so uh, in this case, it means that we don't actually have to say at least one. No, no, no. It is you have to learn, you have to explain it in your report. How you're going to explain it in your report so that what I do not want to see is uh, your report actually stop at alter, uh, accept or reject alternate hypothesis. You will accept or uh, reject now hypothesis. Okay. Or you ex then you say that you fail to reject now hypothesis, accept now hypothesis. Then you stop there. And your reader will have to go back two pages and find out what on earth your now hypothesis is. Then, then you get marks, re marks um, deducted. So oh. don't, that's, that's, a, that's a problem that I always have. Oh. Uh, okay. Yes, uh, I see. So similarly, uh, um, if I could swap my computer and show you, I, I would de share my screen here. And um, you have, so how many of you already started your um, lab assignment? That means not the video assignment, the lab assignment. Okay. How many of you started a lab assignment already? If you have not started the lab assignment or if you have started, let me just go and hunt down something for you to see. Uh, am, I showing, am I sharing my screen now? No, right? Uh, no, so uh, there's just a black space. Yeah, right. So I'm not showing my screen yet. Let me just hunt down something so that you will make some sense of it because I have a few folders. So I will show you on my the other computer. So I'm sharing the wrong thing. Oops. I'm sharing the wrong screen one. So this is what I want you to see. Uh, really, this is how I will mark your report. In case you never, you know. So I do not want to go all the way back and look at what is your now hypothesis. It is really, really irritating. You have to write it out clearly. Yes, sir. Okay. So this, and please, uh, um, when you print out stuff, this will, our, our, your lecturer, uh, Mr. Tiong, should tell you for your um, lab session, when you have the X and Y axis to be labeled, please do not just generate the X and Y axis. It's going to be wrong. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite, I'm really literally fussy about spaces and capitalization. Yeah. So if you have problems, I will go through how I actually look at your assignments. All right. Uh, so, uh, may I also ask uh, for a uh, question eleven uh, A? Eleven A. Okay, Juana. Eleven A. Okay, eleven A. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, so can we alternatively say uh, that uh because the one way uh, ANOVA test does not involve the assumption uh, that all uh, the three groups must be equal in uh, sample size. Uh, in this case, the uh, group three, uh, which is equal to 169, is not 
equal to uh the one to to 185 no so, no no you, you can't you can't say that because the reason why you should try one way ANOVA is that if you do t test it is not going to cover all three samples all three groups so it's because of the number of samples that's why you do ANOVA that is the first consideration when we do test think about what you always come first what is the sample size or what is the number of samples you have if you have more than two samples automatically t test that test will be thrown away already okay oh. the reason why we choose one way ANOVA is be simply because there are three samples um sample size doesn't make a difference in ANOVA ANOVA will use it to calculate anyway okay remember when our question two our sample size are different three four uh five four and three five four and five so ANOVA takes that into account it doesn't bother ANOVA. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, so also concerning uh, question uh, 12B, uh, uh, ca can we alternatively say that uh, the this is because uh, the data is not obtained independently and the variances of the three uh, stimuli are not equal or we have to strictly say uh, that it is uh, not an independent sample and uh, go into detail or about all the uh, okay so it can you can say that the reason why is uh, not uh, not obtained independently is um it's a language issue how do you actually explain that okay. so I use this as example is to show that how why is it not uh, why is it not obtained independently? Okay, so it depends on the reader. If the reader accepts that it's not obtained independently, then that's fine. Of course, the error that means the variances do make a difference. Okay, which is why <clears throat> um, we actually never cover. You can use your Ballard's test for equality of homogeneity of variance. That's actually to check whether it's all these three variances equal or not. Okay, but it is still not. Uh, that means if you violate the assumption that the samples, the sample variances are not equal, it is still not as bad as the in the, the samples are not obtained independently. Okay. Oh. So obtaining independently is critical for your your ANOVA test. Otherwise, you're going to use repeated ANOVA. Okay. Then you come to um, norm normality, whether your samples normally distributed. Only the third one, then you come to whether are the variances equal. So of course, we have three different three major assumptions there, but which one is the more important assumption? So you have to rank them. The first, if the first and foremost is the samples must be obtained independently. Second, if that is settled, then you deal with um, normal distribution. Are the samples normally distributed? If the samples are normally distributed and you have, you want to be a bit more nicky picky, then you deal with the homogeneity of variances. So there's actually a kind of order. Uh, so so uh, in this case, we will prioritize the in the, uh, the uh, whether the samples are independent first. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, may I also ask concerning uh, question uh, 12C? Uh, okay. Uh, the answer is uh, repeated measures ANOVA, uh, but so may, uh, may I ask uh, why? Uh, since uh, the observations uh, were not made independently, uh, uh, we, uh, how is it that we could still use uh, the repeated measures so, ANOVA? So repeated measures ANOVA is for samples not not 
taken independently. Repeated ANOVA, as I mentioned, it is like the, um, I'll say, it is like your PET t-test to some extent. PET t-test is also not independent. It's one after another, right? Uh, yeah. So it's very much like PET t-test, but for more than two samples. It's because repeated measure ANOVA, it is specifically used for such case. Yep. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, these are all the questions I have for now, okay. sir. All right, then go and take sir. a break, have a lunch or whatever. Have fun. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye.